Hey everyone, welcome back to this episode of Prime News. I hope you enjoy it. We have a lot of good stories for you today. I also want to remind you to enter our Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Nintendo Switch giveaway through the Gleam.io link down in the description. And hey, by the time you get to the end of this video, if you happen to enjoy it, drop a like and subscribe for more content. So late last night, as well as in a video I made earlier today, Today, we talked about how Best Buy has a leak going on out there leaking Metroid Prime 4, Persona 5, and A Link to the Past, all for Nintendo Switch. In, a, in addition, a Twitter user that goes by Stealth is saying that Twilight Princess HD and the Wind Waker HD will be coming to Nintendo Switch, at least to the Nintendo Switch eShop. If you would like more information on this, I'll include a link to my original video that details this out over six minutes. I just want to say right now that uh, it is a rumor, but it's one rumor I really want to be true. So Ed Boon answered a whole bunch of questions at GameStop. And for those who don't know, Ed Boon has a lot to do with the Mortal Kombat series. And he noted that Mortal Kombat X is the best-selling Mortal Kombat game of all time, having moved 11 million units. It does make it the best-selling fighting game ever behind games from the Super Smash Bros. series. So that does bring into question, how well is Mortal Kombat 11 going to sell? Especially since it's not just on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, and all the platforms that got X to 11 million, it's also on Nintendo Switch. Obviously, we don't know, but the game does launch later this month, so it'll be very curious to watch those sales and see how those sales compare to both Mortal Kombat X as well as potentially Smash Bros. That would be a, a very interesting comparison as those two franchises continue to sit at the top of the fighting game mountain. Are you waiting to hear more about Rune Factory 5? You do not actually have to wait that much longer as tomorrow on Nico Nico in Japan they will be hosting a live stream talking about new details for Rune Factory 5 which was announced in the last Nindy showcase. Now it does take place at 6 a.m. Central Standard Time, 8 p.m. Japanese Time and obviously a lot of us won't be able to tune in because uh, it'll be way too early. It'll also be in Japanese without subtitles so uh, we'll just have to probably wait a little bit to get translators out there early in the morning to get the news but you can bet that any news about Rune Factory 5 will be covered in tomorrow's episode of Prime News so stay tuned if you happen to be a Rune Factory fan. Video game accessory maker PDP has announced the Face Off Deluxe Plus audio controller for Nintendo Switch. It is the first controller to feature an inline audio jack. What that means is it has a headphone jack that can be used for voice chat and for listening with a standard headset. It is a 3.5 millimeter jack. Now we all know the Switch Pro controller is great in many aspects, has some weaknesses as well, and one of those weaknesses is there is not a headphone jack. So to see this on a third party controller is great. Now they do plan to start taking pre-orders for it at some point next month, and if you can't guess, the face off name of it is because you could change the face plates and all that and customize it to your liking. And I honestly think this is a great accessory, and again, just like Hori who put a D-pad and a Joy-Con, it's a third party accessory maker solving a problem that Nintendo created. So hopefully we see more of this, especially since there are native voice chat games on Switch, such as Fortnite and other third-party offerings that would massively benefit from having a headphone jack readily available in something like a Pro Controller. As if there weren't enough games already arriving this month on Nintendo Switch, Warhammer Age of Sigmar is landing on April 16th. It is one of those card games brought into the virtual world, and it's obviously based in the Warhammer series. I massively enjoy the Warhammer series. I actually, if you guys ever look in the background of some of my videos, you'll notice on my bookshelf, I actually have a Warhammer book, and I also played the Warhammer MMO, as well as Warhammer 40,000, and like just a whole bunch of Warhammer stuff in my history that I don't really get to talk about because it's it's not ever really on Nintendo, but this one is. I don't know the pricing on it just yet, but hey, it's pretty neat to see another game coming to Switch here in April. Uh, I, I Pretty much at any point this month, if you go in the eShop, you'll probably find something you want to play. We have some potential news about a Switch Pro or a Switch Mini, as Nintendo is hiring someone to work with the USB-PD protocol. This protocol is actually something that's better than the standard USB-C that Switch currently uses. It allows you to have faster power draw, so you can do a faster charging of the system. And, well, it allows you to draw more power and transfer data faster. 
All of this can lead to better technology in a Switch Pro or a Switch Mini, assuming that this is what they use it for. Again, hiring someone that specializes in this doesn't mean they're actually ever going to use the technology, but it's clearly something they are looking into implementing in a future revision or something of some type, uh, maybe a, a future VR device. Who really knows what Nintendo's working on? But Nintendo, but they're hiring for this, so it does mean it is a protocol they are looking into, and who knows what this is going to lead to in the future, but I am pretty stoked if that's the case because while I love USB-C, Nintendo uses it in a non-standard way, so using an even better technology for faster charging and data transfer is something that really piques my interest. You guys let me know what you think down in the comments on uh, what they might be doing with such a technology. And our last story of today deals with GameStop. I was going to make a standalone video on this, but honestly, it felt like a good good way to just kind of end Prime News. And GameStop's in a bit of trouble. They've been in trouble for a while. I don't know how many of you guys pay attention to the stock market and financial earnings for them, or how many of you even care, because I know a lot of people out there just don't like GameStop for a number of reasons. Well, they are one of the last major video game retail stores worldwide, and they are on a massive decline. And I believe their stock valuation has hit the lowest it's been since 2004, so 15 years ago. That's usually not the direction you want to be heading as a successful company. Now, I did go through their earnings call, which has a lot of mumbo-jumbo in there that only investors are going to care about. But some of the things you kind of get out of it is, one, yes, they did lose money overall over the past fiscal year uh, they lost money in the fourth quarter of that fiscal year and it's a year-over-year -year loss that doesn't really look like it, it has any um, future coming up. Now, they are hiring a brand new CEO who starts on April 16th. This CEO has previously worked with Verizon and has seen a lot of success at what he did at Verizon. So there is hopes here that the CEO knows what he's getting into and isn't going to just leave the job after a month or two like the last few CEOs did. In fact, it was so bad they've had an interim CEO for the past 10 months uh, who was never intending to keep the job and just kind of sat in the seat because they had nobody else to do it and that CEO wasn't even at the earnings call because he's on a vacation so uh, that lets you know how serious that CEO might have been taking the GameStop job that being said uh, there are some interesting things we learn about this because there's a lot of doom and gloom going out there about how this might be the end of GameStop finally for the 20 billionth time that people have said it over the past decade but it's weird because GameStop's actually doing okay. They're not losing as much money as people think they are. In fact, they are sitting on $1.6 billion in pure cash assets that are just sitting in a bank. They just have $1.6 billion in cash. They are super flush on money. And part of this is because, you know, $700 million or so was from the selling of Spring Mobile last year. But more than that, they had, you know, almost $900 million just sitting in the bank that has been sitting there as reserves or as pure profits over the years. And they are actually taking $400 million of that and paying off a debt that they owe, like the last major debt they owe, according to the financial call, uh, to some senior people that are going to basically save them about $19 million per year over the next however many years so essentially they're going to take a chunk of that they're going to pay that off and they're still going to have over a billion dollars left sitting in a bank so this does give the new ceo quite a bit of money to play with and quite a bit of um, opportunity to maybe turn the business around. The reported losses aren't extremely dire. I, I know a lot of people make it sound like it's way worse than it really is. Um, we're talking like year-over-year -year losses of like 3% in terms of revenue. It, it really isn't as big of a dip as people are making it out to be but there's always this doom and gloom out there about GameStop and people wondering when they're going to go under and as it turns out if you actually listen to the earnings call uh, or read about it anyways I'll put a link to it in the description it's really not looking good but it's also not nearly as bad as it is. There is a real opportunity here for a new CEO under a new direction to turn GameStop around. I don't know what it's going to take to do that. I'm definitely out of ideas, so I wouldn't be the best person for the job. But uh, whatever this guy from Verizon is going to do, he's at least going to have the money and the backing of the board to potentially turn it around. So we'll see. Again, I you know th there was some thought out there that maybe GameStop might not be around when the PlayStation 5 launches. I think that's massively overblown. I think just based on cash reserves alone, GameStop's going to be around for at least another 5 to 10 years. Uh, I honestly think it's just overblown. But hey, you know what? You can go through the earnings call yourself and tell me your conclusion down in the comments. Anyways, folks, I am Nathaniel Robojance from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you for tuning in. And hey, if you do notice a quality bump in this video, for starters, we built a new editing rig, so uh, we're able to do fancier edits that uh, 
don't cripple my system and crash and blue screen and make take me 10 years to get this edited. And number two, hey, you know what? You're never too old to learn new tricks, right? I have this really nice camera. It only took me a year plus to figure it out. But hey, now things are starting to look better, or at least I hope so. Maybe things are still blurry. I don't know. Don't have my glasses on. Can't tell if I'm in focus. There's been focus issues. I think I fixed it. I don't know. You guys let me know. Also, hey, go check out our Nintendo Prime podcast. We just hit episode 102. And if you would like to show some love for our podcast or any content we make on this channel, why not check out patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. Okay, I think I'm done with all the shameless plugs. I think. I mean, is there anything else I can shamelessly plug? I mean, go check out 5J Gaming. He's a cool dude. I've been watching a lot of beat-em-ups lately. Good guy. Nice channel. Like his stuff. Um, I don't know. I mean... You can go check out Spawn Wave. He, he, he does shows like this probably better than I do. I, I don't know. I mean, hey, we're giving away a Switch. So when we hit 50,000 subscribers, that's kind of cool. Then again, like Player Essence gives away a Switch like every other week, it feels like. So yeah. what am I even doing here? I, uh, I don't know. I guess uh, this is Prime News. Yes. I bet you can't do that. OJ